from uh, the last one we had. Um, obviously, they've extended, got an extension from planning and zoning by removing the application, and they intend on reapplying. They now have a law firm, the same law firm that handled the Woodlawn Springs uh, issue, is now going to be the attorney for Dr. Sajid. So he has obtained counsel. But that's not surprising, and he needed to. Right. right. He's got right. Jimmy Willett. It's not a big deal. Can you talk about the ladder? Yes, ma'am. I was actually just going to say, uh, we're going to, um, I, I invited Jan, uh, planning and zoning director, to be here. She said that uh, they had a birthday party for her assistant, uh, Cindy Pyle. So she's going to try and make it. Uh, so it just, if she pops in here, it might be a little bit later. But she's anticipating it. So um, what we'd like to do is anybody that would like to speak, uh, to come up and identify yourself, tell where you're from, we'd like to know who to talk to and where you're from. And uh, I know Dr. Harris is here. He's, he's lives in Cox's Creek. He's one of my neighbors, one of my immediate neighbors. And he wanted to make some, some points about, he's, a, he's also a developer on top of being a doctor. So he was going to make some points. So Steve, you want to? Uh, my name is Dr. Steve Harris, and I just want to give you a little uh, the, the background because everybody always likes to know who they're talking to and who's talking to them. Okay, um, I have I have five degrees. I have a degree in biology, chemistry, hospital medicine, uh, laboratory medicine and doctor of dentistry and i also have a civil engineering background and i'm and i have developed many many properties okay and so i know the hospital laboratory aspect of things and i also know the patient care uh, end of it and i also know the the engineering and the structural background of of buildings okay and uh, i live in the coxes creek uh, neighborhood where do you live yeah. Where do I live? Uh -huh. What part of Cox's Creek? Cox, Cox's Creek goes all, over, all the way over here to 245. I live about two or three miles up from the elementary school. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to say this in 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 starting, and then and then I will explain a lot of other things. <clears throat> Nelson County needs a rehab center, and they need a rehab center bad because a lot of the patients are being sent all the patients are being sent elsewhere franciscan health care in, in louisville uh, elsewhere nelson county needs to have a rehab center but let me tell you it needs to be planned and it needs to be developed properly and it needs to be looked at long term we just don't need to find a building especially an old elementary school and try to put a hundred bed hospital in in a facility like what is there now in order to have a hundred bed hospital there's a lot of requirements that have to be met you have to consider a lot of things you have to consider the sewer system there's no sewers out there you got to consider your infrastructure you got to consider um, in a bedded facility and this is going to be a bedded facility from what I understand you have to have a cafeteria you have to have laundry services for a hundred beds um, if there's any if there's any IVs at all in these patients um, you have to have medical laboratory to draw blood to check the levels and along with medical laboratory comes medical hazardous waste there has to be room for all this stuff. There has to be space for it. Um, the sewer requirements, it's, it's just not out there. The uh, public utilities that is needed for a hospital is just not out there. Um, I want to encourage planning and zoning to work with the doctor because I hear that he's doing a lot of good things. I don't know the doctor, but I hear he's doing a lot of good things. And this facility needs to be 
out beside of where the hospital is because if there are medical emergencies it needs to be handled immediately and ambulance transfer time that has to be considered um, this would be a major a nightmare for code officers um, the parking is not there you've got to have parking for all of the employees you have to have visitor parking um, I can just go on and on and on, and I will if you would just indulge me a few minutes. The structure of the building, it has to be earthquake proof. You don't take old buildings and turn them into hospitals nowadays with all of the insurance and the OSHA requirements. Uh, the building would definitely have to, to be approved by a structural engineer evaluation and a civil engineer evaluation. All of these things uh, have to be adequate unless there's a, there's, there would have to be a lot of under the table stuff going on in order to get this stuff approved. Whether it's, it's lawyers or not, the fact is it's an old structure. It's not about, it's not, about not wanting to treat patients because it is about the patients and if there's a medical code blue if somebody codes and their heart stops there's no there's no hospital around this is not a full facility hospital it's not going to be a full facility hospital it would be even hard to call it a hospital because of, of the inadequate facilities because of the uh, inadequate public utilities the structure of the building, I have not evaluated the structure. I've not been over there and walked through and inspected the building. But it would certainly have to be inspected by structural engineers and all this. And by the time they spend all this money trying to remodel an old building like that, they could go out here and I encourage planning and zoning to help this doctor to find property out in the medical area where the hospital is and Nelson County needs to look to the future and when they plan this rehab center let's have a nice rehab center and let's have it adequately placed in a medical area when the facility is inadequate ultimately the patients suffer that's basically what's going to happen um, this is going to be a for-profit facility there's going to be a lot of money made here because the federal government is pumping up all the programs for drug rehab uh, it will go through Medicaid so this is going to be a for-profit center uh, it it just needs to be built right and by the time all this money is spent out here there's still not you know what I'm from a I am from Eastern Kentucky I come from an area where we share toilets with our neighbors. There's an old saying, you can dress up a pig all you want, but after you're done, you still have a pig. And I don't know if, it's a, if this is a 501c3 corporation, it will definitely be a corporation. I, I don't know if it's a 501c3 nonprofit corporation or if it's a for-profit corporation. That really does not matter. You have to have space for your patients. That's a requirement. There is absolutely a requirement. I would encourage you all to go home and look up on the internet the requirements for a 100-bed rehab center. Please do this, and you will learn so much about what it really takes to have a hospital. I mean, you just don't put a hospital anywhere. Um, uh, you don't put a hospital that, that's got a hundred beds and a cafeteria and any kind of medical lab on a sewer system. You just don't do that. You can't put hazardous uh, medical waste on a septic system. I mean septic system, not sewer system. There has to be a sewer system for a hospital. You don't put a hospital on a septic tank. 
I mean, you just don't do that. You are the first person who has mentioned medical waste. Oh, there's all kind of things to a hospital. I mean, you, you just look up on the internet. And this is one of the major things. The fire protection. There's, uh, Nelson County operates with a volunteer fire department. And they do good. I've been on two volunteer fire departments and they work hard and they have to put a lot of time in just to be a volunteer and they don't get paid anything. There is a house in High Grove which is just a few miles up from the elementary school that caught fire about two weeks ago and it took the fire department 27 minutes to get there. After they got there they were very efficient and they put that fire out in three minutes but it took them 27 minutes to get there. You don't put a hospital in an area that doesn't have adequate fire protection. You just doesn't, you just don't do that. No, now, I'll go a little bit farther. The Nelson County Firehouse needs to be in the county instead of in the city where it takes at least five minutes to get out of the city. And then it takes volunteers five minutes to get there. You know, maybe six, eight, eight minutes. Okay, now you're driving through town and you've already got six or eight minutes on your volunteers. Okay, now you've got to get through the city and get on out in the county. That's another issue. The Nelson County Firehouse should be in the county and not in the city. And that, that facility has inadequate fire protection because I stood and watched the house of me and candidate Don Thrasher stood and watched a house burn to the ground and 27 minutes the fire trucks got there. Now imagine if that's a hundred bed hospital and you have you have people that's coming in there on heroin, Benny Toy, a lot of Benny Toys come in on the southern border. You know? Part and that is one drug that is used in, in anesthetic in general anesthetic. So you got drug users coming in on heroin, they, they're on phenytoin, they're on they're on all of these things. And and some of them could be could be handicapped. Are you gonna put a hundred bed hospital in an area that's twenty seven minutes from the fire department? I, I, I just think that's just I just don't think that's a very smart thing. And I encourage the Nelson County planning and zoning to do this project right. I mean, help this doctor to find property and, and put up a new facility. If we're gonna have a drug rehab facility, let's have a nice one instead of one that's in an old elementary school that 10 years from now, or five years from now, it's gonna to have to be re-looked at. And I just, I just encourage that. I don't know if there's anybody here on the planning and zoning committee or not, I asked Don, I said, is anybody going to be there of any authority, you know? And I just, I have rushed from Louisville to get here to say my two cents worth, you know? And I don't know if it's going to go out of this room or not, but I think what I have to say is very important. you got to look at the structural part of the building, you got to look at the facilities, the sewer system, fire protection, the building's not big enough for a hundred patients. No, it's, it's, it's just not. It just I has mean, eight, eight classrooms. It excuse has me? eight classrooms. It has a big room. It has a library. They have a cafeteria. They have a cafeteria. They have a library. 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 They have a the doctor having a rehab center, but I want Nelson County to have a nice rehab center. And let's put him out there in the medical district where there's a hospital next door or close by, and let's put him out there where he has adequate fire protection and, and the patients that are out there has adequate fire protection. They just bumped up the uh, fire protection out there specifically for the hospital, and they ran sewers out there for the hospital. I'm not against this doctor having a rehab center, but I'm just saying this particular facility, whether it's in my backyard or not, it's not adequate. And 
by the time he gets through spending money, he's still going to have an old facility. And earthquake structures nowadays, because I know from an engineering background, earthquake structures have to be able to be flexible. They have to, they're built different today than this elementary school was built. 30 years ago, 20 years ago. 80, more like 80. 80? Yeah, yeah. 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 very close. Yeah. 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 1950. Just yeah. yeah. thanks for rushing out of here, by the way. Okay. Uh, no, Billy Ray. Is it ultimately up to. He said 1950 is when it was built. Seeing that this is now going to be government related, not state related. Yeah. It, it, it's not, it's, it's going to be a private operation. Right. Um, obviously, planning and zoning, the element of that is, is Board of Adjustments is going to be uh, dictating it, but planning and zoning is going to go through the Planning and Zoning Commission. It's also going to have to go through our local uh, code enforcement. But if Medicare is, or Medicaid, whichever, putting money into this, then it Well, federal Medicare and Medicaid federal aren't going issues, to federal guidelines that are going to have to be that are more than our county level guidelines will be. There are, but Medicare and Medicaid is not going into the initial capital investment. Medicare and Medicaid is going to be the back end uh, reimbursement. So yeah. those those are going to apply on the back end, not the front end capital expenses. Yeah. But those Here's how it have to make their requirements. They they go by the local codes. They they're they're more concerned about whether or not they're meeting the health aspect of it. Medicaid leaves it up to the local so I truly believe if if a rehab center is put in this old building, it's gonna be a nightmare for Nelson County police, for Nelson County Fire, it's gonna be a nightmare for the code officers, and eventually it's gonna be egg on Nelson County's face if it's not done properly because it can be done properly, it can be done nicely, and not cost that much more money, or maybe even the same. It's probably it, costs less money than trying to rehab this building. Absolutely. It probably costs less money, because they're gonna to have to bring in water. If you go on 245, sewers are there, water's there. But what they need is already there. All Absolutely. they have to do is build a structure. It needs to be where the existing hospital is in that district. Exactly. Nelson County needs to look ahead and plan and turn this into a medical district out there. It already is a hospital. Let's put another medical facility out there and let's put it in right. Because I truly believe this is going to be a on some planning and zoning commissioners and the step goes like this. If planning and zoning approves it, they get engineers to draw up site plans, and then site uh, site plans are approved, and you have proper you have to have proper water, sewer, drainage. All that has to be approved, and then I can't see this project going very far unless there's a lot of stuff done under the table. I'm just being honest with y'all. Um, I pretty much say it the way it is, and uh, I'm not afraid to speak out on something like this because I have an engineering background, I have a medical background. And I have a dental background, but I see patients. You know, this got nothing to do with dentistry. I don't know, maybe he might have a uh, uh, someone come in and do dental facility. I don't know, but you have to have, if you do any kind of dental, you have to have all the facilities that you have, that you have in an emergency room. And above all, the bottom line of this is not about the doctor and not about the facility. The bottom line is we have to be concerned about the patients. And they're the ones that's going to suffer, and nobody's going to know about it because of the inadequate facility. There's not even enough land there, unless there's a lot of stuff done under the table. Now, you can get lawyers and involved, and they'll try to do whatever, whatever they try to do. But I am totally opposed to having a drug rehab center in this facility because it's just inadequate. It's inadequate everywhere you go every direction you go structurally it is not earthquake proof you know if it's built that old from what i understand some of the structure right now is weak the, oh yeah Ooh, there's holes sure. in the floor the gym um, there's a big hole in the gym I, I i have not inspected it um 
Let I'll me ask you a you. question. Are you going to be at the meeting on September the 20th? It's at 9 o'clock. Oh, is it 10? No. Nine. I think it's a 9 o'clock. Yeah, they changed the time too. Okay. So. We really need you to come Inside. to the meeting okay. before the board. We need you to come. Where is it? What's that? I'll come fill in at your office. What does he <laughs> want me to do? I want to. It's Thursday. It's September the 20th. Thursday. Thursday at the September the 20th at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock. And I don't know where yet. I thought they. Uh, the civic I thought Civic, civic Center. Civic Center. Civic Center. Civic Center. Civic Center. Because he'd had a big turnout before, like 70 people. So yeah. he doesn't want to do it there at the uh, second floor the type of house. The Civic I, I, Center. I don't know about the 20th. I have to check my schedule. But somehow I, I think I'm supposed to be in Missouri for a, a pathology uh, uh, conference meeting. I don't know. But. I was hoping that what I have to say here tonight, uh, somebody will will take heed to these things because I come from a medical background, an engineering background, and a development background. I have developed three shopping centers, two major buildings, and I just know the procedures in the development. And if this facility gets approved and and they go forward. It will amaze me, but you got to look long term. You know, I, I want the Planning and Zoning Commission to look long term for Nelson County and not just stick a rehab in an old remodel elementary school. We can do better than that, ladies and gentlemen. We can do better than that. It just doesn't have to be like that. I think that's about all I have to say. Um, I looked up some of the requirements on the internet, and you do the same. I looked up some of the requirements. I have the square footage, minimum square footage, acreage, and maximum square footage and acreage. Uh, look up uh, what it takes for a 100-bed rehab center. And to even think you could put a 100 hospital beds and and have linen service and cafeteria service, and you got to have semi-trucks bringing in food. I mean, just to think that you can do this. You know, maybe this was the only option that the doctor had, or maybe this was the first thing that came along, but I, I'm pleading with Planning and Zoning to please take their time and plan this out right and make it work and make a rehab center in Nelson County to be proud of. And, and it, I firmly believe it will definitely be a, be a nightmare for the code officers because they're going to have to be out there doing inspections all during the remodel. And I, I, I just... Uh, she has a question. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Harris. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, am I understanding that this is going to be a medically assisted facility where they give them prescribed medication? No or yes? No. 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 No, it's not. 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 There's no detox. There's no detox. There's no detox. There's no uh, medically assisted treatment that'll take place. They have no legal rights to hold. No, they don't. Okay. So they're coming. I'm sorry. So they can walk anytime they, they want. Time, yes. Right? Coming and going and no medication and, and no IV. So it's basically right now. It's, a bumped, yeah. it's exactly. a bumped up hotel yeah <coughs> so in other words you get a, a person that is a, a drug addict or alcoholic and dr harris i believe you can answer this question for me i do know that an alcoholic can die from going through dt's is that correct yes and there's, there's a process certain, in that yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and then on certain drugs that a, that a drug addict is addicted to from going through detoxing from that, they can die from a few drugs as well, if not properly medically attended to. There's all kind of but, medical emergencies that happen, that happen around drug rehab. There's all kinds, of, all the time. That's why this needs to be at the hospital. But, but the doctor said that the detoxing, the detoxing would be at another facility. After they detox, then they would come here. Is what he said. Yes. There won't so be detoxing. no detoxing. So the well, it's designed to be a 
90 to 180 day treatment facility. The patients that are coming will be detoxed days. in detox facilities. They will have done at least 30 days treatment in a short term treatment facility. They will transfer into this facility as a long term treatment plan. The, the overall running of it, it's a non-medical facility, just like Isaiah House is in Chaplin, which Isaiah House's rehab facility is in the old Chaplin Elementary School. Oh. That's the building that they use. It'll be run they only very have like 15 similar to people, Isaiah they? House. Yeah. It's this, that type of facility. But the Isaiah, but the owner, the, owner, the, owner, the, owner, the director of Isaiah House actually is, is extremely opposed. Extremely, to this. yeah. yeah. I, I, I talked to Mark. Mark, I and he is. That. I've been, I've been to the facility, and Mark is 100% so so against so this been, type. Again, of can and we talk to? This facility is modeled very much like any other rehab facility. They still, no, have, no, they still no, have to no, give no, medication no, and everything. We, we, they still we, have to. Give we, we can it's talk. Just, we, we went over to the Chapman facility, Isaiah House, and talked and met with them all. And they have a program that is driven by Medicaid only. They're a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're actually sponsored and, and by the churches as well with mm -hmm. their tithes and offerings every week. Um, very fine people. They have a program which they know that Medicaid only allows 30 days in a facility, first of all, is what they told us. Mm -hmm. But they have a facility set up that they ha can actually keep them 90 days the way they set it up legally. And they don't see a 30-day rehab facility capability. Uh, they do administer uh, other drugs there, if I remember right. Yeah. Right. They yeah. self admit They self They self yeah. Thank you. And and very nice, very clean, very fine facility. Uh, the person who started it owns a still business, and he's uh, he contributed to it. He actually is now giving him that still business to be a very profitable opportunity. And um, I'd recommend if anybody's interested to go look at the process. Um, the concerns that they did address and some of the things is the movement of people coming and going yeah. uh, the movement of two different sexes being at the facility we're talking about uh, between men and women in addiction is not only in drugs and alcohol but it is in sex as well uh, I used to work in my college days uh, in a mental hospital and I've seen those issues personally and what happens if somebody can become violent um, uh, the Chaplain Isaiah, Chaplain Kentucky Isaiah House is actually an outstanding facility. They have a gymnasium in there that's really quite nice. They have a very organized structured program. They don't allow any more than 32 people in their facility. It's four eight-man rooms, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, very all clean. Men. Huh? All men. Yes. All men. Yes. Um, everybody who works there, including the director uh, of uh, public affairs is former drug addicts. That's part of their program. Work for us as you come off of addiction. He actually had just taken us on as the last day and been taking, he's taking on another drug addiction facility. And the assistant, I think you have his own number, don't you? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering, is the Isaiah House in Chaplin affiliated with the one in Wolfsburg? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. And the thing, about, the thing about the Isaiah House is there's an incentive for those, since it's nonprofit, there's an incentive for those people to go through all the way because they're guaranteed work, a job. Isaiah House gives them a job. They say, you complete this, you do what you're supposed to do, you, you stay here, complete this, you're guaranteed a job because they teach them welding, they teach yeah. them trades, yeah. I mean, skilled yeah. trades. And what happens is with this, with what Dr. Sajid is proposing is just for profit that. They can walk out. There's no incentive for them to stay. I mean, yeah. you know, maybe they've been talked into their their family says you got to go to rehab, and they go to rehab, and you know they fall back. But when you when you go to the Isaiah House, but yeah. the cop, compliment what you're saying, and not trying to talk too much, you, you kind of stole my thunder. It's like, how do we help them create jobs at the same time? That I think there's nothing in office reporting. Well, no. and, it's, and it's, it's not on that. It's Nelson County or wherever. How do we direct that? I, I like the fact that all the churches are involved over there. Mm -hmm. I think it's a it's, it's an amazing facility. facility. I, I, I think but it really I think is. about being able to approach the churches around us, the goodwill, the ability to say all the businesses in the area. You don't have to hire them all, but maybe we can help them. I'm not, in, you know, I've, I've got addiction in my family background, not me, but I understand that need for that help. 
and, um, and it's, 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 the other thing Frank had mentioned, and I'll say this, I really, really think before this doctor out of Elizabethtown moves forward, we have to have a business plan. We have to be able to expect that. It's our society where we live. It's our community. I've heard that they're going to be coming in from out of state, all the area. I have some concern with transient patients. I think they need a place to stay for a period of time if it's only going to be Medicaid where they get this. I think your suggestion out there, Flagge, is an excellent location. I, I, I compliment that because I hadn't thought about the dirty needle situation, but that's an excellent point. And they're all getting treatment by needle, needle every day. Mm -hmm. And with 100 patients, that's 100 needles. But I think that's too big. That's all I'm going to say. Thanks. <laughs> it's my thing that the public utilities is, is inadequate. Can the Nelson County Sheriff Department? Oh, good point. Can talked, they stay on this? I talked to the Nelson County Sheriff. we got to look at all these I things. went to the Nelson County Sheriff. They can offer no security whatsoever. It's they, a, have, they have four. They have four deputy sheriffs each shift for the entire county of 478 square miles. And he, I, I, he nice guy, but they can't offer any protection, and neither can the city of Barristown. When we had the meeting at the school, uh, the, there was two candidates there, and he said it took him nine minutes, I think nine minutes, to get from the center of town to Cox's Creek Elementary School. That's not including if they're over in New Haven or is somewhere else, Washington or wherever. The county sheriff said it from the south Boston. side is a 40 minute drive. Yeah, so, and they are, he did say they are able to come and go. They can come in there. If they want to leave, they cannot hold them. Yeah. They cannot. We we live two two driveways before you get to the school. We do, my husband and I. We have grandbabies out there all the time playing. I I mean I know we need a drug rehab place, but I'm about like you. Put it back here. Put it over here on 245. I also have. They. I am all for. Uh, a drug rehab facility here in Nelson County. I have family members that are drug addicts and alcoholics. And uh, my biggest concern is exactly like Dr. Harris has stated, the patients. It's all, why well, have a facility in an inadequate place if the patients aren't getting the best of the best that they can get. In Nelson County, from Flagey Hospital, how many ambulances do they have? If they're on call, if there's a short, not many ambulances, and just like I asked the question, can you die from detoxing? And it was answered correctly by Dr. Harris. How many, does anybody know how many ambulances? Flagey Hospital has. Yeah, I don't know. Flagey has. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
but it does not need to be in, out there in that facility. It needs to be in the medical district in Nelson County. That's all. Uh, it needs to be something that's going to be a nice facility because the patients will suffer and there will be medical emergencies out there. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a, there are 41 people in this room. I'm just counting right here. 41 people in this room. And now you double that and make beds for them all and wash their linen, flush their toilets, uh, have a cafeteria, have a laboratory. It, it's a nightmare. It's, it's, it, it's just a nightmare. Well, I just want to, you know, I'm late to the game. I learned about this after the fact. I didn't know about the meeting. I live on Murray Penn Road, right off of Hobbs Lane. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little girl, and, um, and I, I, one of my big concerns, truly, first of all, I mean, we know we have a huge drug addiction problem everywhere. It's hit Nelson County hard. I'm not a native of Nelson County. I've lived here about 10 years, but I'm from Marion County. And I grew up in the country, and I know what it's like when there's nothing else to do. Um, it it, it kind of leads down that path sometimes. But So what are the resources? What are they trying to offer these people once their 30 days are up? That's gonna, I mean, what is his plan? I wasn't there. His plan is what's to his, make money. Yeah. Well, I, I know that, right? I mean, that's what we all, that's yeah. what we're all that's suspecting. Amazing. But that's so when you're trying to ask a question, though, that you're asking other people to listen to the answer to, what are we asking? I mean, what's his program? What's he going to do? I mean, there are a lot of ways we to treat drug addiction. Some of them are effective. Most of them, I mean, all of them have maybe a 20% effective rate. Eventually, people who get off of it, get off of it on their own. Most hey. people. And that's a fact. And I know that because I deal with a lot of drug addicted people and what I do and you know um, he hasn't but technically gave a plan of what he's gonna do I and mean and that's so, what we, and that's yeah, what we have to have. yeah he why would they even be considering this before that's in place he, I mean that's something I think we're entitled to know and it's not just about the best for the patients. I'm all for people getting help when they need it, when they want it. Here's I'm also all about me feeling safe and comfortable in my home. Mm -hmm. um, here's and the, I'm here's not the issue. Here's the issue. The Nelson County, the current Nelson County ordinance allows for what's called a conditional use permit. He's right. applied for a conditional use permit. Yes. Here's the thing everybody needs to really think about for a minute. You know, I just want you to think about showing up to the next fiscal court meeting. I'm going to tell you why. Does anyone remember when the Heaven Hill uh, facility or the, the Barrel Reserve yeah. moved in? Okay, so they initially went to planning and zoning. Heaven Hill said, you know, initially made their application to planning and zoning, said we want to apply and put in this 100 acre, you know, huge uh, urban uh, warehouse facility. Well, they, they applied planning and zoning. They were about to do the first reading. They pulled it because Dean said, Dean Watts said, we're just going to pass an ordinance. Change, change, let's plan, change the planning and zoning ordinance so this doesn't have to, so 100 acre urban warehouses that still spirits warehouses no longer have to go through planning and zoning. So if Dean's done that once, that sets a precedent. That means we can all show up September 4th at the fiscal court meeting and demand, you know what? If you can do this to us in uh, if the fiscal court can do this in Cox's Creek to us once, we want you to do it again and take that rehab thing out of agricultural and say, you know what? We're eligible for that to be removed from agricultural. Take it out of it before he even gets a chance to take it to the Board of Justice. That's what we need to do. So September 4th, 9 a.m. next Tuesday, if everybody shows up and says, you know what? We want the same treatment. If, if you can change the ordinance for Heaven Hill, why can't you change the ordinance to get that rehab out of conditional use permit out of the A1 planning he has, he has scheduled another meeting for the 20th of September. Mm -hmm. that? That's the Board of Adjustment. No, that's the Board of Adjustment. That's the Board of Adjustment. Board of adjustment. Board of adjustment. No, no, no. Yeah. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they've done this. They set the precedent with the Heaven Hill Barrel Reserve. They changed the they changed the law. Okay. So in other words, changed the actual planning and zoning law. We can march in there on September 4th and ask the fiscal court, can you please start process of taking rehab conditional use permit for rehabs out of the agricultural A1 zoning? Okay. And they can do that because they did the same thing with Heaven Hill. 
So if they can do it for Heaven Hill, why can't they do it for us to get a rehab dollars? So that's the point. Go ahead. September the 4th. Yes. Yeah. 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 We'll be there. Uh, what she was talking about right there, I live in the Cedar Creek area down there, and I don't even live around, you know, Cotters Creek. But what these people's got to remember is the planning and zoning is zoning, then planning. They don't give a crap about nobody. I've got a, I've, out there on the road I live on, I've got an 18 year fight that I have with the federal government on, a, on an issue I've talked to you about. And planning and zoning came in there and took half of this property and put it in the city. And I live six miles from the city. The other half was left in agriculture. They beat me down like a dog and I fought them for 18 years. But you've got to remember, this damn town does what they want to do. Well, and they do it, yes. they do it for you. I can't yes. do it in a minute. But you know what? We're part that's of because people we're part don't know people say that. Right. Right. We right. got to keep it. That's what I'm saying. Look, September 4th, we can ask them for this. We can say, you've done this once before. You've went in and changed the ordinance. Do you have a copy? Do you have a copy of that? Point in the direction where to get sure, it. Okay, go to uh, go to planning and zoning, go to ordinances, or go to go to uh, the planning and zoning, and look under A1. You'll see where it was amended in 2017. That's the amendment to change it to allow 100 acres for distilled spirits. They don't, if you want, if anyone has 100 acres and you want to just put up a distilled spirits, a uh, huge bourbon warehouse, Wherever it is in agriculture, you can put it up in this county right now. So, but if you wanted, if you wanted to put up a storage facility for golf balls, you're gonna have to go through planning and zoning. So you know what? I'm not saying anything, but I think it's wrong. That's just me. But we have a chance. We can ask. It. Forget about board of adjustment. March in there, September 4th, Tuesday, nine o'clock. He'll hear us. He'll he'll hear whoever wants wants to talk. And let's say, you know what? We want this ordinance change. We want rehab centers taken out of agricultural zone conditional use. And they can do it because the president was set with Heaven Hill and just happens to be in our neighborhood. Where is, where is the meeting at? Uh, it's a fiscal court meeting. Upstairs at the Second floor, yes. Okay. Oh, courthouse. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. First off, this no, I was in the Nuffstown Park Center area. But my thing is, if you think about it, how many people is actually in your house or in your family that has a drug addiction, a alcohol addiction, anything? If you sit back and look at how many people actually needs this, you're looking at yourself. I understand there's kids involved. I understand that you know it's all over the place, but they need somewhere to go too. My a certain person had to go out of state because they didn't have it here because he could not get here. Well, actually, or actually, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, what, Isaiah House doesn't allow locals to do it because of the risk to leave. So where's our people supposed to go? Out of state. 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 Okay, you live in Barchtown. You, you know, and I'm gonna be. Wait a minute. When, I'm gonna be quite honest with you. There would be resources for these. I'm gonna be quite honest with you. I am an addict. I am an ex user. An ex user. Wait a minute. This is going in my front yard. I'm not saying that we do not need this, but we. I don't want it in my front yard. I chose to go to Georgetown to, to rehab. I didn't want to go here. I, I would much rather have it out there at the hospital. We Have you been out there and seen the school? The school is on six acres, I believe. 
six acres. The school is falling apart. The school is falling apart. Like I said, I'm not saying don't put it here. Put it here. There's a hotel out here, uh, right down the street here. Put it there. I don't think there's anybody here. We're not saying that we don't need it. We're, well, we're not saying that we don't need it. Man, we don't want it there on our side. We understand this. I will bear my display, Lucy. Okay, go ahead. Okay, my name is Terry Adams. I do have a son that's six years prior to. He did go to Michigan, and that, in truth, they do require or ask that you go out of state because you don't know the people around you that have the drugs. Okay. Well, it's hard. I for agree. You to I agree that. with that. And he went to a facility that was very run down. I mean, it's not. You don't want elaborate for people. That I mean, you don't. It was. I think it's. I don't know. It, it was really old. Okay. They made it work. I do agree that you have to have sewer and all that. If that's what we need to do, then yeah, we do need to look otherwise. But for the people here that are saying, I live right next door to somebody, by hell, you're living next door to somebody right now because they're going up and down that street. If you don't believe it, you're blind as hell. I am not saying that we do not have it around us. But I do not want a hundred people, and if 50% of them people want to walk out of that facility, they can walk out of that facility, and I'm telling you, the yeah, first time, house, exactly, exactly. Where I live, I know, I know for a fact at the end of my street there is tons of drugs. They're going back and forth down my street. They ain't going to do nothing. Every day. Do they so where are they going there? there? No. We are. Yeah. In the city limits, I'm out of way. The, <laughs> we all right. So say that you're worried about the the sheriff and stuff like that. You got the same problem now. If, no, if you need a, if you need a sheriff, it, it's it's not. The same. Honey, you, do you believe your house will not be robbed right now? I, I, I respect. I really respect your. Yes. Family. I really do. You come. But 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 I'm I'm, I'm just gonna just 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 so we don't get all argumentative. I'm saying if you, you know, right. if she has a robbery in her house, nothing, but you nothing have the You have the benefit of having Barstown City Police. That's we right. have, we have, we're in the court. We have four. We, we have four we have sheriffs for, for 30,000 people. But regardless. Hold on, hold on, hold on. For 30,000 people, we have four people four. on duty. For 11,500 people, you guys have usually five to six at night. So there's a big difference. Yeah. So we but we, we have we're under you law. Four people every night, regardless what's in the backyard, regardless. I say we need a new facility. I do, I think we yeah. need. But, but for people to be upset because it's gonna be in their backyard, I want people it's to understand. Right we're we're not saying I want people to understand it's back there. there. I want people to know right. drugs is everywhere right. you're at. We know it's we there. know the we know that percentage of something happens. Can I count all the Get out of here. Right, so let me just I want to ask one question. Uh, let's say, let's just put it out there on a hypothetical scenario. This doctor buys that six acres, tears that school down to the ground, builds a state of the art. He can't do that. There. He can't do that. No, he no can't sewer. tear it down. There's no fire protection. The fire protection. Excuse me, ma'am. I watched somebody's house burn to the ground two weeks ago, and the fire trucks, it took them 27 minutes to get there, and it's not the fault of the volunteer firefighters. I'm saying the fire protection is not there. And, and yeah. just a second, I, I get that. the initial yeah, 10 minutes there. of a fire is the <coughs> most, in my backyard. The yeah. most That's why important I time. Yeah. If, if the backyard was the, the right place, fire, we wouldn't mind. It's not an idea. It's, it's not, 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 not going to be yes. effective. Yes, I if would. you want the treatment yes, to be effective, you've got to have it somewhere where the people are going to be able to maintain their sobriety once they're finished with it. There's nothing there for them to connect with. Are they going to hike five miles into town? It's a drug rehab. Exactly, but it be, you want it to be effective, right? You don't want them to do 45 days every year, yeah. right? You want them to find sobriety and keep it and maintain it. It, but takes it has leadership. to be in an area that can support that. There has yeah. to be the resources, the mental health professionals. 
the, the, the job opportunities and employment opportunities that they can access. It's not an appropriate place to want to do that. I agree. You know, I, I, okay, sir, you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to say this real quick. You, you've been to Isaiah. Yes. I think if you want to go out there and take a look and listen to them, they're on a three-month program out there under Medicaid. I realize they're a nonprofit type of operation. I'm not against for-profit. I wouldn't even care if this were built behind my house. If I know the security, the way they're doing it is correct, I, I'm for any of that kind of work. But again, it gets back to, we can sit here and talk, and we can argue and complain, and everybody's point is very valid. I'll tell you straightforward, okay? But I think somehow we've got to convince the county judge, well, show us the business plan. Well, it's not up to you. That's why yeah, I'm saying, I mean, I, I, yeah. this well, process, and, and, and I, this, yeah, I'm telling you right now, the judge's position is, this is going in because they don't want a legal battle. Well, so, no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, telling you that you right now. Yeah, yeah. We need to go in there on September 4th yeah. and tell them yeah. that we need to do the same yeah. thing they do for heaven help. If you can, if you can, if you can change planning and zoning ordinances for a big corporation that he just happened to work for, then you can change it for us. Because you know what? We're the ones that when that thing, if that thing were to catch on fire, we have an unmanned Cox's Creek Fire Station is five minutes from that facility. Exactly. That that thing is unmanned. I talked to Dean Watts about this yeah. last Tuesday. Or the Tuesday before last, at the, at the last fiscal court meeting. I told him, I'm like, Dean, this facility, we need to figure out a way to get volunteers in there, ask Kevin Hill to uh, pony up some extra money or something, yeah. because you know what? That is five minutes from their facility. Mm -hmm. He told me, he said, Don, if the fire, if, 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 my, if my house caught on fire and uh, me and my wife weren't in it, I really wouldn't care. I would really want to see uh, fire resources wasted on them fighting that fire unless me and my wife were in there. Now, me personally, I took offense to that. I just find it a little bit difficult to comprehend because I just talked about it. I find it disingenuous. I don't think Because I was talking about the fire that, that Dr. Harris and I witnessed. And it, was, it, was, it was awful. It was terrible. And, you know, I just think there's a lot of issues here that we need to circumvent the, 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 the Board of Adjustment process, or at least try to circumvent it, by demanding that if they can change the ordinance for a big corporation, why can't they change the ordinance for us? Because you know what? We already have a big warehouse facility that didn't have to go through planning and zoning that was supposed to. So you know what? We got messed over once. So you know what? I think we got something precedent set that we we can go in there and say this is what we this is what we, we need. I hope several will show up for that. I, I do too. And please yeah. anyone that wants to call me and talk to me, we'll we'll set it up and I'll tell Judge Watts, you know, to, to Make, make room for us or ask, ask him for room for us because well I, I'll be there please every the, I know, more, the more Ms. people Blake, that show oh, she up said she'd be there the more people that show up the better because you know they don't they don't listen to me I get up there and talk all the time they, you know <laughs> but but if, if we stick together and work on this we're not a big corporation but you know we're voters yeah and you know what at some point that counts so but I'm I'm yeah, go ahead. I was just wondering is that building actually legally sold to this doctor? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's sold by another woman. It's yeah. Hard. You want to address that? Well, no, it's, it's, he has it's a contract. Excuse me. The, 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 the doctor has a contract on the building. Okay. And it's contingent upon getting the CUP. If the conditional use permit. If he does not get the conditional use permit, the contract is null and void. So he bought that building. If they knew what they were going to use it for? He, he didn't buy the building. He had he a contract had on the building. And yes, but, but you see, oh, may I tell you something? It's not up to the realtor. It isn't up to the realtor. The realtor has it for sale. Anybody who wants to put money in, a contract on it, can. There's nothing he can do about it. He filed a conditional use permit, and it's contingent upon that. So if he doesn't get the cup, then it's done. If he doesn't get approval by planning and zoning, the contract to purchase the property is falls through. No so way. what I'm saying is, what's the hurry? What's the rush? Why can't we do this right and put it in the medical district where it, sh it should be? There's no emergency on this. He has a contract on the property. The contract, it, if it falls through, it falls through. He'll find another piece of property. And that should be out there. And I know planning and zoning can help him find property. And I know there's people out there that will sell him property. There's plenty of property out there. And it should be done right. It's, you know, it's not about 
it is about staggering people up and down the road that can just walk and come and go anytime they want. But that's just one thing. It, it's about the patient. It's about everything. And it, to build a hospital, there's a lot to building a hospital. A whole lot. Absolutely, there's a whole lot. Is flash even under Yeah. Okay, and I understand people can come and go as they please. I live by myself. I'm a little worried about that. This building is on a septic system. There's going to be septic waste. There's going to be so much overload on the septic system. There's going to be septic waste going over on the neighbor's property. That's why I'm saying is this, this is going to be a nightmare for code officers and planning zones. Is this project where they're coming and going every day? All the time. Okay, because when I talked to the, the, the <coughs> county sheriff did bring up another point. Uh, all of those people are DUI people mm -hmm. because they are drug addicts or alcoholics. And that, having 100 people come and go is 200 cars on the road in that area. There's just not enough room there. So you got to think There's about not the legal land, side of that too. The facility's too small. I, mean, I don't know why it, it, why we're not trying to do this right and help this doctor to do the right thing at the right location and have the right facility. Sure. Okay. okay. It's all going to boil down to exactly what you're saying, not the fact that I don't want them next door to me. Yeah. Because I've got a barn, you flick a cigarette, and my barn's gone. My horses are gone. She's right behind yeah. it. They're right across the road with cattle. That has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. It is all about what you have had to say, the legalities, the water being brought in, the septic, yeah. the medical. We need you at the meeting. We need you at the meeting. Uh, I'll try. I'll look and What I'll can I do to I'll, help you? I will try. And, and you know what? <laughs> Go to Missouri, honey. Show up, show up to Missouri. I've been there. All right. But I'm not against the doctor, and I'm not against the facility. I just say, ladies and gentlemen, let's take our time and do this right. You're making sense, and you're making sense that will work. Well, I have to make sense because I'm a clinician, and I have to make practical uh, solutions to problems. And I have two offices, and I have nine employees, and I have three doctors. So I have to be a problem solver every day, and I'm a clinician too. So, um, I mean, it's not about the emotions, it's about the facts. Don, it's just about the facts. And I'll you're in charge of him. <laughs> <laughs> you're in charge of him? <laughs> because that, that we didn't know about. No, what you have said will, what you have said will do it. It will do it. Well, you know, I'll try, but but this county seems to have leaders that are kind of in a clique and, and they know what they want to do. <laughs> uh, but this is the thing. When a structure catches on fire, the initial 10 minutes is the most important time. I've been on two volunteer fire departments. And, and, and there's adequate, there is inadequate Fire protection out there. I know. For a hundred bed hospital? A hundred bed no, hospital. One, well, one thing is big inadequate inadequate septic, inadequate water. They'll have to put a sprinkler system in front. I mean the whole thing that is a mess. It's a single story. If it was a three story it would be different, but yeah. it's a single story and it's antiquated. Oh it's so, all you want to add on as 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 all question all again. Yeah. I mean up. Yeah. 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 I heard you talking about co ed men and women uh, I believe he's supposed to have is it, uh, that's my question is it co-ed I believe it is I think that's what he said yeah that's what he said but like he said he doesn't have his business plan written because he says he doesn't well there's nothing I don't know I don't know if it's a, it starts out, it has to be approved by planning and zoning, and then you do site plans, okay. uh, structural an analysis, structural drawings. Well, he's got to have some kind of plan to present the All of that has to be approved. That has to be stamped and approved. And like I said at the beginning, because I don't like to repeat myself, but if this goes through, there has to be a lot of under the table stuff going on. And, and that happens in Nelson. Well, we need to do it. The last zoning meeting, the person from Elizabeth Town was supposed to have his attorney here. He didn't show up. 
and I think we're starting to get the drift here. Show us the plans. I don't think anybody's against drug rehabilitation. Absolutely. I just think we need the plan. And if we don't see a plan, then we need to hold the county judge accountable. Don't approve something without a plan. Simple as that. You know, next thing we know, we're going to be a group recalling. He didn't have anything. That was why they, that's why they delayed the hearing. He obtained a law firm now, and they're going to be handling it. That's one reason. Adopted Hamilton no, he has Jimmy Willen. Right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same one that did the uh, the Woodlawn Springs um, PUD change. Okay, I don't believe that. Uh, back to address everyone here in, in the room. There is a stigma on drug addiction. Oh. Our president of the United States right now, Donald Trump, is pumping a lot of money, where some of them federal dollars could very well come in from uh, the Capitol. Yes, we do need drug rehab places, and we do need to drop the stigma on people being addicted to drugs and alcohol. It could happen to anyone, anytime, any day. We're all God's children. We're not perfect. And no, nobody, quote, wants it in their backyard. But you don't know who in your family, any of us, one of our grandkids, great-grandkids, our parents, and just as you said, ma'am, you are a recovering addict yourself. So, therefore, we do need a facility in this county bad links, but it has to be adequately done. It has to be in the right place. In the right place. Right place. That's to, what we're saying. I think I'm like the I stigma of drug addiction. To think is anyone in this room doesn't agree that we need to drug exactly. addiction. Oh, right. But we don't. I don't they don't think you need more. Alright, David, you want to expound on that? You know, there's no responsibility. And you know what? This county, this county, I guarantee you, is using that juvenile law to push drugs. We've got five unsolved murders. Yeah. We've got a needle program. So if you live in Harden County, you come over here, get your clean needle, and then we're, all we're doing is supporting drugs. That's all we're doing. We've got a police force that, that, that's out there trying to do their job. And then you turn right around, and then there was a guy up here before, uh, no, red light had a needle in his arm. They couldn't even take him to jail. They had to take him out there. I'm against them. I'm against them. I don't agree with you on that. Well, well, sir, I, that is that is your problem. I, I respect that. I do. I, I, I totally you respect. You. I, I, I agree to disagree. <coughs> but I guarantee you one thing: you mark it down. This county is using juveniles to push drugs. Well, sir, I've not been living in this county very long, well, but I am been here all my from life. Louisville. And I know about drug addiction. I, I do too. I've and seen it. Sir, I, I, but you've got to have a little bit of get up and go not to take the stuff. Okay. Push but, 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 but there are instances where people There's there are situations. situations. I agree with this, gentlemen and ladies. But, sir, to answer your question, it has come an epidemic. It When people get addicted to drugs, it changes their brain. It scrambles it. So I think my brain is scrambled they anyway. They went against tobacco. They put all the tobacco farms out of business. I agree with you. Wait a minute. When we had tobacco, you didn't have drugs like you've got it now. Yeah. Is there a you drugs? don't have drugs like you've got it now. When I was in my early teens, we didn't have all of the drugs, the access to the drugs that our children and grandkids have. And people of my age, of anybody's age in here, are older. But we got to do something to help them. Now, I don't want to see my child, my grandkid, my niece, my nephew laying there dying if they only had that one shot to let them live. Have a I have a program to put to, to encourage people not to get on the kids. I agree with you. But see, kids right now are more than this county. They're in this county for these kids to do accept. Yeah. That's not what this is about. We're getting off track. And I, I'm not the leader of... 
this meeting, but I'm saying that planning and zoning needs to step up and they need to lead this process and help this doctor find some property out by the hospital and put this thing where it needs to be and put it up right because it's got no fire protection out here and they don't have police protection and how can we let a hundred bed hospital with people that's drug addiction come and go and walk up and down the road to neighbor's house and we're all rocking How can we do that? If anybody wants to go to the fiscal board on Tuesday, call me. Let me know. Do you have a card? Yes. 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 Whoever wants my card. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why wasn't anybody notified about where you were last week? Well, we we, we went on our own boat. We just went. Yeah. Um, thank you. Right. And um, we just it, it was to learn. But I can give you a card. Yeah, we, she can give you the new PR person, and I'm telling you, it's a, don't misunderstand me, I don't mean it's egotistically, I've traveled all over the world a lot in my life, I've seen a lot, I've been to inner cities of Detroit, I've been held up three times in my life, and walked away from them all, don't misunderstand me, I'm not patting myself on the back or running away, I'm mad I got in the middle of it. But at the end of the day, if somebody said drugs, we have them, it's a problem. I have no problem with that, as the gentleman back says, well, sh shame on them for taking them. I have drug addiction family, a person, and not drug alcohol, I get it. But if you go to Champion and talk to them, you'll get some solid reason, some lo logic reason. They've taken the Medicaid program out to 90 days. They know the loopholes. I don't mean that sarcastically. That you, you, they were with me. They've got a great program. They have but, an excellent program. But this isn't that. No, this is for profit. Well, we're near. Yeah. This is for profit, and I have Done. nothing against this for profit. As long as we build not this is taxpayer for everything. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I was, I was asking, though. I'm oh, sorry. The, 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 we went down on the last thing that nobody knew about the surprise meeting where we all were at that said that uh, the doctor was there. That was at Cockles Creek Cox Elementary Creek. School. No, no. Uh, no that, that was the meeting that was at the new Cox's Creek. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was at Cox's Creek Elementary School. No, it was, no, it was a, there was a meeting at the Cox's Creek, Creek Elementary School no. sometime back. The, the one that the one with was. There wasn't one at Dean Watts, was it? They canceled that one. They canceled that one, I think. Yes, we went in and talked. If what happened to the meeting at Dean Watts? There wasn't no meeting at Dean Watts School or Dean Watts Park. The monthly meeting, I believe it was last month, the first of this month. Right? Yeah, we went to that. and They canceled and rescheduled. They canceled and rescheduled it now for... September 20th? Yes. September 20th at 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, the county yeah, they, house yeah. at 9 o'clock. Yeah, they canceled it because, uh, so... Uh, the attorney wasn't there for... What was it, Ms. Blanco? Why they canceled the meeting at the fiscal court? Because he didn't have that Well, anyway, everybody, thank you. Thank you. Like I said, that meeting's going to be at the Civics on September, on September, September the 20th. 9 o'clock at the city center. Yes. They got the other one.